Many endoscopic techniques can be performed with one hand. Their purpose is to look around for pathology or deliver laser energy. These maneuvers are relatively simple and can be executed by most surgeons at their first attempt. Endoscopy is a great tool for finding things inside the eye. In those with opaque media, ultrasound or radiologic techniques may indicate that a foreign body is within the eye, but from a surgical perspective, they do not define exactly where it is. In the presence of significant intraocular disruption, this can be particularly daunting. This one-handed technique rapidly and effectively locates intraocular foreign bodies and permits endoscopic monitoring of their removal with a forceps or other instrument. Endoscopy is also useful for finding surprises in the eye. In this example, a vitrectomy for vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment was planned, but once the blood was cleared and the retina reattached, the tumor was observed. In this situation, an otherwise healthy 80-year-old man presented with vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment. But once the view was cleared, acute retinal necrosis syndrome was observed. The video on the right shows the reattached retina with laser applications and silicone oil fill, along with extensive peripheral retinal necrosis, optic atrophy, and attenuation of the retinal vasculature. Perhaps the most useful one-handed technique is the endoscopic delivery of laser energy. It is much easier to laser through the endoscope than through the operating microscope, even when a good view is available through the latter. As application of laser proceeds more peripherally, it is technically easier to perform by one hand endoscopically than two hands microscopically. The videos on the left demonstrate the 810 nanometer diode laser application in fluid and gas-filled eyes. The third video reveals the 532 nanometer laser treatment to a retinal arterial macroaneurysm discovered at vitrectomy. The fourth video shows the 810 nanometer laser uh, performing a retinopexy. In the two videos to the left, PRP is performed with the 532 nanometer laser by one-handed endoscopic delivery. The images on the right demonstrate the painting technique of retinopexy. When healed, these laser applications will have a similar appearance to a fine line of cryo. Let's talk about endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation, or ECP, for a few minutes. This can be a valuable addition to your practice capabilities. If you acquire the skills to perform this technique, you can address your retinal patients with glaucoma problems. Neovascular glaucoma is the most obvious target, and a great therapeutic option for these patients is vitrectomy, PRP, and ECP. You can also expand your capabilities to treating other forms of glaucoma. Indeed, there are many uncontrolled glaucoma patients who have failed or are unwilling to undergo a trabeculectomy or tube implant due to the limitations of efficacy and potential complications. ECP is a different matter. It is very safe, can be highly effective, and is rapidly performed. It requires a minimum of postoperative care compared to these other approaches. ECP can be performed from a limbal approach, and the key to this is inflating the sulcus well enough to view the entirety of each process and the zonules coming off of them. The sulcus is inflated using viscoelastic, and if insufficient inflation is performed, addition of more viscoelastic is required. The ciliary processes are whitened in their entirety by the laser, and then all of the viscoelastic is removed. This is a relatively simple one-handed technique of laser endoscopy. This is a phacic eye with well-inflated sulcus undergoing ECP. The entire length of each ciliary process is visible along with the fine zonules and their attachments to the lens capsule. 
the aiming beam of the laser is placed on the processes and they are painted white. This is an eye with multiple tubes, previous transscleral cyclodestruction, and repaired retinal detachment. Another outflow procedure would be highly unlikely to be successful. On the contrary, the relatively simple one-handed pars plana introduction of the laser endoscope can easily access the ciliary processes and laser them with a high potential for success and much smaller risk of complications compared to the other approaches available to this patient. Because a straight probe can only access 180 degrees of the ciliary processes, as in the center video, the infusion cannula and endoscope positions are exchanged to access the other half of the ciliary ring, as in the video to the right. Note the tube underlying the iris. It is not uncommon during the course of vitrectomy to experience intraocular bleeding, the source of which may be elusive. This one-handed technique is quite effective in rapidly identifying the source of the hemorrhage, particularly if it is emanating from an anterior site. Once located, the surgeon has a few therapeutic choices. Using intraocular wet field, using laser, direct pressure with some instrument or even the endoscope, or raising the intraocular pressure. Endoscopy facilitates the localization of a bleeding source. Some are straightforward, as in the video to the left, showing an area of NVE secondary to a branch retinal vein occlusion. Once identified, laser may be applied. On the other hand, sometimes the source of the hemorrhage is elusive. In the video to the right, a diabetic patient who has had multiple vitrectomies for recurrent vitreous hemorrhage presented with yet another recurrence. Endoscopic evaluation revealed a fibrovascular membrane extending from the ciliary processes along the underside of the iris to the pupillary margin. Endoscopic laser treatment was applied and the patient has not experienced further bleeding.